So most women start losing up to 3% of their bone density every year after menopause. That is not a slow leak. That is more like a flood. So recently I was passed along a study that claimed that resveratrol and equal, these trendy kind of longevity biohacker favorites, can not only slow the loss of bone, but can actually even rebuild bone, especially in early postmenopausal women. Now, this sounds impressive, and it is impressive, but as usual, when we hear supplement marketing, we have to ask, is this just slick marketing or is this real science? So what I wanna do in this video is to dig into the data and separate the signal from the noise. So what is resveratrol? So resveratrol is a natural polyphenol and you find it commonly in things like grapes. You'll hear it talked about with wine, of course. And it's often touted as a longevity compound. I think what makes it compelling in this space is that it does have a little bit of estrogen receptor activity, which is cool, but it also influences these things called sirtuins. Also has an impact on mitochondrial function, which is getting a lot of attention lately. It also can have an impact on inflammation, which of course we know is important to control. So it has the potential to be a very powerful compound. Now, equal is a little bit trickier. So equal is something that we're gonna talk about as a supplement, but it's actually not found in food directly. It's actually produced in your gut after you consume this product called Datesin, which is an isoflavone found in soy. So if you've watched this channel for a while, you know that soy is not my favorite protein source. Oftentimes soy, because it's a plant, is sprayed with things like glyphosate or other pesticides. It also contains trypsin inhibitors, which not everybody can tolerate. So a little bit is probably fine, but daily dosing for nutrient benefit is, in my opinion, questionable, although there's plenty of people that do it. But equal is a potent estrogen receptor beta agonist, and this is really important for postmenopausal women, especially early postmenopausal women, not on HRT. Now, the hypothesis here is this. Can these two compounds, as supplements, slow down the increased bone turnover and mineral density loss that comes with estrogen deficiency? So what they did is created a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial that followed 60 postmenopausal women over the course of 12 months. Great. The intervention group received a daily supplement that had 10 milligrams of equal and 25 milligrams of resveratrol, which is actually not a very big dose. The control group just received a placebo. Now, the intervention, when you actually look at the data in the study, the intervention actually was more than just equal. There was a 200 milligram fermented soy product included in this that also had 80 milligrams of other isoflavones. So hard to know if that had any impact here or not, but ultimately we're looking at the 10 milligrams equal and 25 milligrams resveratrol. Now I was excited to see that they were tracking bone turnover markers. You know that I like to talk about bone turnover markers as a way to monitor bone quality, bone turnover over time. Unfortunately, they didn't track the ones that I would have liked them to track, but we at least have some data to go off of. They also looked at bone mineral density, but again, unfortunately, they didn't actually measure site specific, so they didn't measure hip and spine. They just measured whole body bone mineral density. This is a mistake I see done frequently in the literature. Now, when it comes to the bone turnover markers, they measured a, a few ones that I'd actually never heard of. So DPD, track p 5 b um, osteocalcin and bone-specific alkphos I've heard of, and we used to actually measure those, but we don't anymore. The challenge is, is that none of these are as well studied now as CTX and P1 and P, which are the ones that I recommend. But ultimately, what did they find? Well, they found a 32% reduction in the DPD, which is essentially saying that there's less bone resorption which is great. Now there is a 50% increase in osteocalcin, 8% increase in bone specific alk -fos. So those are statistically significant changes, but ultimately the question is, what does that mean when it comes to bone density, bone quality, fracture risk? Well, fortunately, at least we have some idea of what happened from a bone mineral density perspective because they did a whole body bone mineral density analysis. And what you saw, it was a 3% increase in whole body bone mineral density, which again, statistically significant, is it really what we want to see? No, but at least it pushes us in the right direction. So some of the benefits of this study is that it's 12 months long, which is great. It had enough people to be statistically powered for the bone turnover markers, but they didn't use the bone turnover markers that are now being used more frequently in the literature. Additionally, 60 participants really isn't enough to make a, a compelling statement around bone mineral density, 
Yes, you can see statistically significant changes, but are they clinically relevant? 3% is not nothing, but it is within the margin of error of DEXA. And of course, they didn't actually measure site-specific bone mineral densities. We just have whole body bone mineral density, which we know is not as clear of an indicator of bone loss, bone gain from a density perspective in the hip and the spine. Another thing that they didn't actually talk about at all is the fact that if women are going to try to take the actual dates in or eat soy, only about 50% of those women are going to be able to make equal because of the composition of their microbiome. So this is looking specifically at this equal product as a supplement because we can't guarantee unless we were to actually measure your microbiome whether or not you have the, the microbes that can actually make this isoflavone. Now that said, it brings up another interesting point. If we are going to look at isoflavones in general, so Datesin, Genistein, uh, there's a number of other derivatives uh, that uh, from soy that could be considered isoflavones that have a positive impact on bone. We know that they have a positive impact on bone alone. So then is this all because of the equal or does resveratrol actually have data to support using it for bone alone? And the answer is it does. Before I get to that study though, if you have not been to our masterclass and you are confused by all of the information out there on the internet around osteoporosis and bone health, please consider coming to our masterclass. Because of our practice focusing on bone health, our community of people DIYing bone health, we have seen thousands of people on their bone health journey. And we have seen consistently the same errors that people make over and over again. So if you would like to learn what those errors are so that you can time collapse your journey in your bone health success, please come visit our masterclass link in the description on YouTube or visit us at osteocollective.com. Okay, so the second study is called the Risha study. And this is a study specifically on resveratrol for bone health in postmenopausal women, which is great. What's cool about this study, it was actually 24 months long, which is a really long study for a supplement. Now, this was a randomized placebo-controlled trial on 125 healthy postmenopausal women with an average age of 65. Now, the intervention included 75 milligrams of resveratrol twice a day, now, in this last study, the equal and resveratrol together, they were only looking at 25 milligrams of resveratrol. So this is a much larger dose. Now, their primary outcomes and outcomes of interest were cognitive and cerebrovascular function. So that means brain function and the function of your arteries. Now, the secondary outcomes were for bone health. They were looking specifically at bone mineral density and again, bone turnover markers. Now, the key results here are that the bone mineral density, site-specific this time, of the lumbar spine went up by 1.3%, and in the hip, it went up by 0.9%. So well within the margin of error, but a nice trend for a supplement. Now we saw T-score and fracture risk reduction as well, which is great. So then what about the bone turnover markers? Well, they measured CTX, which is the breakdown marker that we measure in our practice. They also measured osteocalcin as a formation marker, which, uh, we know that it isn't that accurate as a formation marker, but we'll take it for what it is. So the CTX reduced by 7.2%, which is not really clinically that impressive, although it is headed in the right direction. And then osteocalcin went up. So what we're saying with these bone turnover markers is it looks like we have a positive balance of bone rebuilding, meaning that we are breaking down less bone, we are building up more bone, and that's exactly what we want to do. Now, the cerebrovascular outcomes were also positive, meaning that resveratrol had a positive impact on the cerebrovascular outcomes that they were looking for. I am not a vascular specialist, so I'm not going to go into those. So then what are the takeaways from these two studies together? Well, it looks like resveratrol and isoflavones like Equal from Dazen or Genistein can help women going through menopause to not only reduce bone loss, but potentially to actually build bone. And this is in women who are not on hormone replacement therapy. So this is really powerful. Now you might be asking yourself, is this as powerful as HRT? No, we know that for women who are going through menopause who start on HRT, we can reverse that drop in bone density and push bone metabolism in the opposite direction and really build bone up to 10% of bone in 12 months. So estradiol and HRT as a package is a much more powerful tool, but this is a very low risk over the counter supplement. So let's talk about how we would use this in our practice. Actually, to date, we haven't really been using these two specific supplements in our practice, but after reading this research and 
pairing it with some others, we have taken a look at what supplements we could potentially add to our list. Not that we need more supplements, we have plenty. But when I look at the women in our practice, for women who are not going on HRT for whatever reason, for women who are not going on HRT, we're always looking for something to push on estrogen receptors. And currently we're using Genistein and there's a lot of great research on Genistein. Uh, we also sometimes will use maca. But I could see a use case in our practice where we would use this for women who are not going on hormone replacement therapy or not on estradiol, but are using testosterone and progesterone off label, but as a way to push on the estrogen receptors and then also, I like resveratrol because of the, the cardiovascular benefit, the cerebrovascular benefit. So I think that this is an interesting kind of longevity, health span, bone health play that we should probably be looking at doing more of in our practice. Now, you might be asking what specific product I would recommend. So like I said, we're not currently using a specific product here. I did look on Fullscript, which is where we have our dispensary. There are a number of products there. Some of them do meet the criteria of that 75 mil milligrams twice a day. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do some deep dive into the products that are out there within our community in the Osteo Collective. We have a, um, a supplement recommendation area and we have access then to our full script dispensary where we have discounts on supplements. So we're going to build this out in there. If you want to leave a comment, ask a question, ask us which one we eventually decide to use. You're welcome to do that. Uh, but ultimately, this is something that's going to be in our community. If you haven't seen our community and you're looking for resources, or if you are on a bone health journey and don't have enough support, please consider joining our community called the Osteo Collective. Again, you can go to osteocollective.com to check that out. And that's it for today. Remember that a diagnosis of osteoporosis isn't the end, but deciding to reverse it is a beginning. I'll see you in the next video.